Welcome to Locally Sourced. I'm Armanda Famoletti. 55 is a very long time, but the Southeast Museum has been educating and entertaining residents of Putnam County for that long. And my guest tonight has been the executive director of the Southeast Museum for almost 20 years. Welcome, Amy Campanero. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So almost 20 years, how is that possible? I have no idea, it was like <laughs> yesterday. I keep looking in the mirror and I said, have I really been there for 20 years? But I just love my job and I love the community and the county, so. Have you always been interested in history? Yes, ever since a child I have been. In elementary school I loved history and then going through um, college I loved history. I was gonna become a physical therapist and at the last minute I decided to become uh, major in history, and then I got my master's degree in history shortly after. Okay, and what about Putnam County history or this area? It's so interesting. I grew up in Westchester County, um, and I came to Putnam not knowing much about Putnam County history whatsoever, but it really has a rich history from, you know, colonial times, revolutionary times, all the way up, you know, it's the anniversary of World mm -hmm. War One, World War One. We just have a very rich history here, our landscape, the reservoirs here, iron mining. It's really, really, like I said, when I came here, I didn't know much about it. And now I've been here for 20 years, so I'm still learning every day more about it. <laughs> so um, if for those of us or who haven't been to the Southeast Museum, which is hard to believe that anyone would have missed this great attraction in Putnam County, but tell us about where it is. Uh, how it serves the community, what would you see if you enter the Southeast Museum? Okay. We're located at 67 Main Street in Brewster, New York. So we are right downtown. We're f maybe about two blocks from the train station. We share a parking lot with the Brewster Public Library, which is our good partner in many events. And if you come to the museum, we have five ongoing exhibits, historical exhibits. And every year we do a temporary exhibit or a changing exhibit. So we do mm -hmm. historical features such as that. And then we also have children's programs. We have this summer and last summer great science programs, um, you know, working off of STEM. So science programs for the kids, incorporating science and history together. We have music concerts. Mm -hmm. We have lectures. We have historical round tables, if you will, which I think we'll talk to you a little bit about later. Yeah. So we kind of try to do some entertain entertainment. We do a caroling event every year. Santa Claus comes. So we do some more entertainment and then actually some more academic programs. Okay, so the, actually the building that you're in is fairly historic, right? It is. A building was built 1896 to be um, town hall for the town southeast. Uh, the other two buildings burned to the ground. The other two town halls? Two town hall buildings, thank you, that burned to the ground. And um, they took the insurance money from the one that burned earlier and they built this one, which is 1896. And it's a three-story building. The museum originally moved upstairs in 1963. And then we were on the top floor, and we moved in our current floor, which is the middle floor, in 1977. I have mm -hmm. been there ever since. OK, and in the basement, there's? In the some... basement, there is a studio around the corner, which has great art exhibits. And they also um, have music concerts and other um, programs, mm -hmm. art programs such as that. Right. So. It's, it's, a, it's a nice basement. I said maybe it would sound <laughs> like that's so good. But it was originally nice built basement. to be a basement. That was it. It was never, you know, to be a functional basement. It was always a dirt floor basement. Oh, really? And then later on, it was renovated to, you know, town court for the town of Southeast was there, the building department at one point. But originally built in 1896, it was not supposed to be a usable space. Okay. Well, it's very nice now, I have it, to yes. say. And what about the top? What's happening with the top? Uh, the top, of that there building? is an effort to renovate the top. They recently had some new windows put in that were actually removed, restored, and put back in, and the window frames restored. So what about a to, theater? I thought that theater. Well, that's what they're trying to renovate. It's a theater space upstairs. Um, years ago, that's where Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts used to meet. Brewster High School used to have their graduations there. That's where the big send off from, you know, most parades would be. The viewing stand would be in front of the museum. So they're trying to renovate that theater space and have it open, so. Okay, so tell us about um, the exhibits that you have all the time, and you also have quite a, an extensive collection that people don't always get to see, right? So oh my goodness, we do. We have about 8,000 things. 1,000 things, and they're in, all in, in that building somewhere? They are stored off-site in a climate okay. control building. Those of people who have been to the museum realize that we do not have heat and we do not have air conditioning, so we mm -hmm. keep our stuff you know, mm -hmm. archival stuff somewhere else where it's protected. So we take better care of that than we do our own staff. So we don't right. take care if our staff gets too hot <laughs> or too say, cold. Um, but the stuff is well protected. Mm -hmm. But what we have on exhibit is we have exhibits on the Tilly Foster Iron Mine. We have exhibits on the Early American Circus, Early American Farm Life, the Borden Milk Factory. 
In fact, uh, I was on KBS, which is Korean Broadcasting System, a documentary there um, based in, in South Korea about our board milk factory. Mm -hmm. um, we had mysteries at the museum come to the museum, and we'll be airing shortly oh, really? about an object that we have in the museum. So that's very exciting. A we, mysterious object? A mysterious object, which is on the Travel Channel, so mysteries at the museum. I know, I've, I've watched um, it. And they came uh, Valentine's Day. So they are, it's going to air, they say, shortly, hopefully in the fall it will be air. And when I know, I will let everybody else in well, the community the, know. Well, what's the mystery object? I can't object? tell you what the mystery oh, object is on. because that's the whole point of the show. Well, for crying out loud. No. Okay. Well, what I, I, is, I it, is it Eddie Fisher? It is not Eddie Fisher, but we do have a stuffed Fisher, the animal of Fisher, um, which we had a contest, and it was someone decided to name it Eddie, and we thought that was great. Right. You know, I Carrie know. Fisher's father, um, Debbie Reynolds' ex-husband. Right. Um, but Eddie, we also have other Eddie exhibits. Is, well, Eddie has seen better days, let me tell you, if you go to the Southeast Museum. Yeah, Eddie, yeah Eddie, Eddie is fairly old, and he's um, on a branch. A Fisher cat, right? He's a stuffed. He's a stuffed Fisher. He looked like in the mink family. Yes. Yes. He's yes. very soft. Yes, he's cute. He's, he's cute. Yeah, he's cute. Do you he's, let the kids who come into the museum pet Eddie Fisher? I do. Yeah, they get to see him. They, that's kind of the highlight of it after is. they walk <laughs> around the whole museum and they have to listen to my whole historical <laughs> spiel. They get to see Eddie and some okay. of them are, Well, you know, actually, I'll say that I don't. it wasn't the highlight. It was <laughs> close for me. Well, you're not in third grade. Oh, okay. But they, you really do have very interesting uh, permanent yes. exhibits and, at Southeast. Yes. And we have on um, the Harlem Line Railroad, the New York Central Railroad, uh -huh. so we have right. you know that as well. We actually have a couple of slides, okay. um, photos from your archival collection. Um, so there's what's, ooh, there's a, oh, there we have, um, a manly man. <laughs> that is a manly man. That is an unknown um, fireman for the train. The fireman is the person that would shovel the coal. What do you mean unknown? We don't know who he is. Oh, okay. We don't know who his, actually who he was. Because I thought um, he but, might be the mystery of the museum. Oh, no, 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 no. no. He's not. He's not the mystery. I shouldn't have told you that. He's you not the mystery of the I'm museum. It's going to bother you. And, about um, that. and here's a steam engine pulling into Brewster Station. I think wow. today we forget how tall trains are since we always get onto them on a platform. Yeah. Of course, today we have electric trains, but that's the back of, a tra of the um, Brewster train station. And that is circa, that's a close up. That's circa about 1939 because okay. we have an, uh, and 1939 those are, car. Those are commuters. Those are commuters, commuters that are going to get up and they're going to get on the train through a little step stool. Okay, and, and they're going to the go work in Manhattan or they're gonna go, West yeah, Chester. Mostly, yeah. Terrific. Exactly. That's exciting. And back when the train stirs, first came to Bruce in 1849, it took four and a half hours for the steam engine to get to New York City. Well, that's still true today. <laughs> Well, today is what an hour and twenty minutes if you get well, not on a local. Well, not line. you know. What can I say? I'm a I'm a reformed commuter. I don't commute anymore, but okay. um, I certainly had a couple of four hour commutes. Really? Yeah, back in the day, if tree falls on the track. Was was it in 1849 with the steam? Uh, I'd rather not? not discuss that, Amy. <laughs> We're here to talk about you and the museum, not me. Um, so. You said that there's no air conditioning and there's no heat, which no. means you're closed we part close of the in, year. Yeah, we close in December, so our last event of the year is our magic show and caroling. We carol down the street. We light a tree, count down to the tree lighting, and the Village of Brewster trustees provide refreshments. So and that's our last event, usually the beginning of December. Mm -hmm. And um, this year it's going to be December 1st. And then we close down, we take all the exhibits down and we put them in storage. And then the staff is still there, but we go to the library. And, okay. and have I was going to say, but you're wearing there. overcoats and earmuffs. But uh, oh, so you, so the staff is the still staff working. The staff is still working year round. We just aren't open to the public because we don't think the public wants to. To get that to get, cold. Yeah, to right. get that cold. So yeah, are it you. Does get, it actually get, got down two years ago, three, it was very cold winter. It was actually 32. Inside. In, in the museum. Yeah. So. Um, so are there any plans to heat or air condition the museum? We hope so. There have been some grants put in um, this year to for the whole building to do, you know, heating and air conditioning more efficient mm -hmm. for the whole building. So currently downstairs in the basement where the student right. around the corner is, they have, you know, heating and air conditioning. So we're hoping to do something in a zone system. So Great. we'll see. Yeah. That's well, being there 20 years, it makes you a pretty hearty purse. I guess so. <laughs> and it's too bad that it has to close in the winter because well, yeah, that so would be could, something for yes. people to do in the winter is to go see exactly. the Exactly. And, you know, even though we're not there, I said, you know, we, we're, the staff is still, we're not in, the, in that particular building, but we go to the schools at that point. We do our oh, all okay. off-site program. So we're still in the community. We're just, see, our doors are closed. See, I thought you went to a tropical island and just rested for the winter, but now you're telling no, me No, but you now you're giving me work. ideas of what to do. <laughs> I think you were the one who told me you did that, so... Um, so let's talk about the things that are happening now through December 1st, right? Okay. 
uh, the history exchange. What's, what is the history exchange? Well, the history exchange, I have so many people come to the museum and they, they grab your ear and they want to talk about, so, you know, can you research this and we go through our archives are and hopefully... Are they pests? Are you calling them pests No, 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 not, not what's... And then I said, there's so many people that would just want to sit down and talk to us. So I said, why don't we have a group, it's like a round table, everyone who, who is, enjoys local history enthusiasts to come down. And we've started in June, so it's, it's monthly, it's at the Brewster Library, which has heat and air conditioning. Um, but there's the poster. And it's the second Wednesday of the month, and it's 6 to 7 p.m. We have snacks, it's free. What we do is I usually go and do a little historical, you've, you've been to them, a yeah, little I, historical I've been to two um, out of three. Talk. So who is that? Is that Babe Ruth? That is not Babe Ruth. That is... Um, <laughs> Why don't you just say it is? The same, I... <laughs> an unknown man. So it's oh, unknown another man. unknown man. Is um, he the mystery of he's, the mystery? He museum? is not the mystery of the museum. But um, he wrote the Sodom Raspberries. The Sodom Raspberries was a amateur baseball league the in the 19, 1920s that was around here. They played the teams in Danbury. They played Westchester teams. A very, very good team. What kind of name is that? The Sodom Raspberries? Sodom from the area of town of Southeast. They had an uh, area town which was referred to as Southeast Center in Sodom. They switched names back and forth. This is where Brewster Hill Road is. Uh -huh. and that's where they would play baseball, and that's where they were um, based. So Okay. You don't uh, think that's a funny name, the Sodom Raspberries? No, not, not you whatsoever. Don't, you don't find that amusing. I okay. don't, but with history exchange, so then we have, I talk a little bit about history, and then when people exchange ideas, we have some long-time residents there, so mm -hmm. it's almost like an oral history. And everyone can ask, you know, the people who are in their, you know, later years, what was Brewster like in the 30s and 20s, and right. they're there to tell them. So it's, it's a fun, it's a fun, I enjoy it. Yeah, I so. enjoy it. So I've been there two times, and you have two older senior gentlemen who mm -hmm. come in. One of them is actually remembers what Brewster was like in the 30s, yes. and the other one remembers what, what Brewster was like in the 40s, or the whole area of Southeast and, and Putnam, and Putnam yes. not just Brewster. Um, and they're fascinating. They, they? Those guys are great. You they know, are. it's just so, I, I can remember when I was a kid, I loved listening to the stories my grandmother would tell mm -hmm. about when there were more horses and carts than there were actually cars on the road yes. and things like that. And I was fast. So listening to those two gentlemen is very similar to that in a way of hearing it, them reminisce about the It know, is. It's fun. And happen. it's not like a boring lecture. Oh, no. If people, you know, interact. And we talked about prohibition last time. Yeah. And you know some other interesting things. Morningthorpe so Mansion. Yeah, Morningthorpe yeah. Mansion and the circus. And before that, we talked about board and milk, and yeah. you know, and, and filibusters, and, and you know, militia from around the area. So it's it's fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I would encourage anyone to go. The next one is. It will be in um, August. So it's it's. No, no, I no. Don't I'm think sorry, so. September. It is. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> September. So it's the second uh, Wednesday in September. It is, I forgot. We're already in August. The second Wednesday, and then it's the second Wednesday summer. of every month yes. throughout the year. Throughout the year. And, and if we have enough people that are maybe older and that don't, don't want to drive at night, we can always do one in the afternoon. So if there's oh. more interest for people, because when it gets darker, right. as we get on with the winter months, some people don't want to be driving at You're 6, 7 o'clock at night. You're very accommodating. That's Thank very you. nice. Um, and there are refreshments, I should mention. Yes. There are refreshments. I won't say who eats most of the refreshments, <laughs> but there are refreshments. Um, don't say who eats them. Uh, so, uh, what about your new website? That's something you want to Oh, we're to very talk excited. We, um, our we website, have a slide of the new website. Yeah, yes. Um, oh, there it is. It looks so nice. That's it's our logo, beautiful. which we've had for a while Discover History and Community at the Southeast Museum. As you said, we've been there for 55 years. The best thing about our website is now I can make changes to it. Before, we had to have a web designer make changes, and it just was a very long process of if they would make changes. Um, it's still a work in progress. We are um, we have how can you help? So if you want, anyone can make online donations to us, which is nice through PayPal. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, you know for a history museum, we're actually moving into technology. That's great. But we have um, we will be having historic photos with all the information about that, and we're working with an outside database company to upload all. You know, like I said, we have eight thousand things. Yeah. So everything in that's in our archives that no one gets to see every day. Even when you come in the museum, it will be up and you, people can research that. So it will be a better mm -hmm. research tool for everyone. So right, and that's part of your volunteer opportunities, right? People yes. can come in and help you and help digitize. us scan and digitize. Yeah, we, have, we just got a brand new scanner, which is a wonderful scanner, and, just, and it can just do slides very easily and film strips and all that. Oh, so terrific. we're very happy about that. But it's you know, the wave of the future. Most people just want to sit home and do their research from there. They don't really want to come into the museum as much. Oh. So this way we can accommodate those who want to come in and those who want to sit in their pajamas at home. And uh, you also have um, a great Facebook page. Yes, which thank you. That is actually kept up to date pretty yes, well. Yes, yeah, that say. that I could always update myself. So um, last week we put a photo of Kishwana Golf Club, Country Club, 
that is now um, it's across from Heidi's um, Heidi's yeah, sure. um, in on Route 22. It used to have a golf course, tennis um, Ooh. tennis course, downhill ski uh, schools, downhill ski school. So and I just put up and said, "Where is this?" And everyone was guessing on Facebook. So it's nice. Oh. Sometimes you put a little trivia and quizzes up and a lot of historic pictures. Yeah, it's amazing how much recreation there was in Putnam County. Oh, definitely. Like, that would be a good subject. Not that I want to tell you what to do, but a good for an exhibit, for an exhibit, or for the history exchange, I think that would be fun. Because that uh, would be, yeah. Yeah, there's there was all there was horse racing. We and had horse racing, yep, and in, in Carmel as well. Um, even in the '40s, there was you know a little car track, you know car racing. Car but, racing. Yeah, but since we had the reservoirs move in, we became more of a passive community, you know, with our, with our industry. We couldn't do as much that we okay. wanted to do. So that's when fishing and boating and things like that. It increased a little more, especially in the 20s and 30s, and we had bungalows and, and Peach Lake and, and hotels, and exactly. Yeah. So, but that yeah. is a good topic. You can, yeah. You can start researching. A, Let know. me know how you, <laughs> how you do. I'll get right on that, Amy. <laughs> um, so, there's another thing that's happening. I don't know if this is new or it's been happening for a while, but it's the museum out in a boat. Oh, yes, the museum out and about. So we work very hard in a lot of our exhibit panels that we do in the museum. I research, research them. We have volunteers that research. We, we have every a picture in our archive. We go through, we scan, we send it to our wonderful exhibit designer. She puts it together. It's a lot of effort. And I, yeah, there's, and, there's the poster. Oh, that's the great one, yep. And that's on Daniel Brandon, um, prisoner of war for World War I. He's the only Putnam County's only um, prisoner of war for the First World War. Mm -hmm. So that took a lot of effort and, and it, it's one of my most enjoyable things to do is to create panels like this but they're up in the museum and if you don't come to the museum you don't get to see them mm -hmm. so what we're doing is we're making them into poster size we're putting them into actually mounted on foam core and exhibit panels and they are in the county building they're in Putnam County Savings Bank other government buildings in the library so as when people go around town they get to see them they'll mm -hmm. be shortly in the DMV which would be great when people have to wait online they can see yeah. something you know and learn a little bit about local history and they're rotating so they're not just on World War One. We have women's suffrage and other topics, Tilly Foster, Iron Mind. So it's a great way that we're out in the community for people who mm -hmm. can't come to see us, that we can serve others out there, yes. to make them more aware of our rich history. And is that, like I said, is that something new this year? Or that's new this year. Okay. Yep, that's, that's new this year. Terrific. And you mentioned something to me called the letters, and that sounded very intriguing, perhaps mysterious. Is, does that have anything to do with the mystery at the museum? No, it does not. Um, but when we do have the mystery at the museum, I will, maybe we can watch it together <laughs> if you want. Um, the, the letters is, um, it's called the, the Letters Voices from the Great War. It is an original play written by a Putnam County resident about World War I, and it includes all the World War I letters written home. Wow. From Did Red have been Cross nurses donated to the museum. Well, or some the have History been donated Society? to the museum. Some have been printed in our local newspapers, the Brewster Standard and the Putnam County oh. Courier, that we have permission to have reuse. And the Brewster High School, the Southeast Museum, is partnering with the Brewster High School, and it will be their fall production. So we're wow. going to have the Brewster High School students recite and immerse themselves in World War One and recite these letters of, and they're not just you know males, not it's, it's, you know it's it's the Red Cross nurses as well and mothers here on the home front. Uh -huh. So it's a wonderful. So they're this pretty is the, poignant. They're, I oh, they're imagine. very poignant. They'll be reading poetry, singing songs of the area uh, era. Um, the museum quilters. We have a quilting group that quilts. They are actually making a quilt. Hand, not, not machine done at all, all hand done because that's how they did it, you know, during mm -hmm. the First World War, you know, era. And that's going to be displayed and, you know, used as a prop in the play. And that's going to be for raffle as well after the play. So it's a great collaboration. It's, it's yeah. many, it's a, over a year in work in the process of working with the school. And we're so happy that Brewster High School is partnering with us because it'll be their fall production. It's just, Terrific. I'm over the moon that it's happening. And now it's just a little more research. And then when school starts, they're going to start rehearsing. Excellent. So, and that's going to be Veterans Day weekend. Perfect. And um, veterans get discounted tickets for all show. And the matinee, which will be on November 10th at 2 o'clock, all veterans are free for that show. Wow, that is so. Great. And there's more information to come. It'll be on our new website as well as you know the high school's website and our Facebook page. But it's, it's like I said, it's just wonderful. It is the centennial, the armistice of World War One, ending mm -hmm. in November 1918. So this is 2018. So Perfect. it's just Everything's great. Everything's coming it's all, together. Yes. So we're very, very happy. So, we're happy we can finally announce it and then it's out. Yeah. No. Uh, well, yeah, announce it, and I'm glad we, you know, we're able to talk about it here because it sounds like it's going to be terrific. I just Thank you. can't wait to see it. Um, Maybe, well, we'll talk about it later. I was going to say maybe we can have some of the students on the show. And oh, that would be can, great. Um, do an excerpt from the show, from the play. Ooh. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. I said that now on television, so I guess it's going to happen. <laughs>
Uh, so you were talking a little bit about your partnerships, and you said you partner with the library. Tell me about some of the other local nonprofits and groups you partner with. Oh, we that. partner with the Putnam Arts Council, which is a um, they're, they have a third double facet. They're in, in May Pack. They're a um, grant, re grant organization, which you can get okay. grants from. And they also have gallery shows, art mm -hmm. shows, and art, art classes for, um, for people of all ages, from, you know, from beginners all the way up, from you know, mm -hmm. children all the way to adults. It's a great organization. I've known their director, Joyce Bacone, for 20, almost 20 yes. years. <laughs> and we partnered to, um, to put artwork in Tilly Foster Restaurant, Tilly's Table. So Tilly Foster Farm Restaurant, we have, they have artwork up there which is for sale by one of their artists. And mm -hmm. the museum has historic um, reproduction prints up there, not for sale, but just to decorate the restaurant. Oh. So it's a great partnership with Putnam County and the Arts Council as well. Um, we partner with the Putnam Historian, Historian's Office all the time, sure, you know, sure. doing research and things like that. So we really, um, we partner with Studio Around the Corner. I, um, this past July, Bob Zubricki, that had, they had a music concert and I do the historic, I put everything in historical context. So whatever the historical time frame of their music they're playing, mm -hmm. I say whatever's going on locally, nationally, or globally going on in the world. So that's great. That's true. So, so are you actually there in person or are you, pre, you know? I am there in person, you, yes. Person. I am in there in person, Woo. live. <laughs> Live on stage. <laughs> Live on stage. Amy Campanaro. <laughs> and, and yeah, and people attend, so definitely not to see me. But <laughs> <laughs> so um, museum-sponsored events. You say you do education and entertainment. So yes. what's coming up in terms of those two categories? Uh, um, for entertainment, we'll do, we'll do chronological. So for um, entertainment, we have the Danbury Mad Hatters. Oh, I um, think we have a poster. Course. Okay, yeah, they are. They are coming Saturday, September eighth at three p.m. It's a free concert. They're at the museum. They are at, at the library. At they the will library. be at the Brewster Library, so we're very happy to the Brewster Library and their director and their board for allowing us to use their space for all our events, um, and th they are wonderful. But this is a great concert. We had them last year. We had 80 people come. It was standing room only. So Whoa. if you want to come, is no free? registration required. It's free, but make sure that you, you come um. early because there's only so much space that we can have you. But they're great, and they um, sang with us last year in August, and they lead our caroling. So this is what, hopefully this year, they'll lead our caroling again down Main Street. Oh. So they are just wonderful. And they're all local group, They or? are from based in Danbury, okay. but they are, have singers from you know, Connecticut oh, as well okay. as, as Putnam, but that's they, they rehearse in Danbury. Wow. And then we have... And it's all a cappella? So, yes. It's, it's amazing. It really is. I mean, we, we have, oh. like I said, I keep saying people from all ages, but we at last... We had grandparents, their children, their, and their grandchildren come. And Do they have sing-alongs too, or it's just them singing? People tend to sing along. I don't know if they <laughs> like that or not, but, but, but it happens. It happens. <laughs> it and, happens. And then on September 15th, we have an author talk. We have Dolores Beale Stevens, who wrote the book. Um, this is her third book that she's written about her father's World War II experiences. And she'll be speaking at 1030 in the morning at the Brewster Library, but a museum event on September 15th, mm -hmm. which is a mm -hmm. Saturday. What about his experiences? Um, merit three books or well, well, well uh, her father was in World War One and World War Two, oh. so that's to be of note. And um, in World War Two, he they are from a well drilling family in Southeast in Brewster, and he like left water well, water drilling? well, yes, water well. And he when he left to, to enter the war, he was stationed in Africa, and he dug all the wells, so for soldiers that needing water and this and that, and then they left the wells there for the community. So um, very, very interesting because it's yeah. a facet of, of war that we don't think about. Right, you right. Know, that you, have to, you need the infrastructure there and people to build bridges and this and that. Mm -hmm. So um, her first two books, one was Those Who Served, Those Who Waited, were about Southeast and World War II, Southeast people who served, the home front end um, you know, soldiers. And her second book was Growing Up in Lake Tanetta. They had a summer home there. And so this is her third book. is just exclusively about her father and her mother and their experiences during the Second World War. Wow, okay, so the home front and the front lines yes. are covered. Fascinating. Um, so you know a lot about local history, I assume, <laughs> after 20 years and a history degree. and um, You also teach, right? At, um, yes, yes, I teach at um, Western Connecticut State University part-time. What do you, you history, I assume? I, I teach American history, yeah. Oh. So I teach anywhere from explorers, you know, through the Civil War, and then there's another class, Civil War, to present day. Oh, terrific. So I teach both classes, okay. yeah. It's fun. Yeah, teaching's fun. Um, so, so what about Putnam County interests you the most? What would you Historically say? Historically speaking? Yeah. I mean, can you? You know so much about all the different aspects. Can you just single out something that really gets you going when you hear about it, or...? 
Any mysteries that might be oh, any lurking? Oh, yeah, I see you coming back to mysteries. <laughs> um, I, there, there's so much of it. I think it's, you know, our community is always selfless. We're a small community, mm -hmm. especially if you think historically. You know, our population right. today is, what, 100,000? A little, a little 100, less than 100,000. A little 100,000. 100, and 10 years, 30 years, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, how small our population were. But always ready to serve and always ready to help each other. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look through the old newspapers, it's always just neighbor helping neighbor. So it's more of a social history that I find more interesting. Mm -hmm. Not so much about this event and this is what happened, but how our community always comes together when the schoolhouse burned in, in Southeast in 1923. And everyone said, you can have your, your, your classes can be here at my Cool Fit Underwear Factory on Main Street. It could be in Town Hall, it could be here. But right. everyone's always selfless. And, and that's that, throughout that, Putnam County. I would say that is continues. Because Oh, definitely. When, that, there's that thread of that here within Putnam County. So I think from a social, you know, historian point of view, that's what makes me, you know, so interested all along yeah, the line. Yeah, what do you think is the, the basis of that going back over the years? Is I don't know. I think people I, like Drew who, who started the Drew Methodist Church and the seminary. And were mean, there particular, could be. I mean, we, we had, Tilly you know, Foster, were yeah, there we had, you know, we had, characters? And we had, you know, Gail Borden here with, you know, the condensed milk. We just had a lot of leaders here. That and return back that, that to returned, the yeah, that returned and, and you know were charitable to their community, helping build churches, right. helping you know build you know schools, mm -hmm. the fire department, things like that. It's just a very selflessness, right. you know, and quality that that they, that we have in Putnam. I don't know where it's rooted, you know, particularly to. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's it's great. It's, you know, I don't want it to the go Mayflower, away. You know, settled over here. Some of those people. So maybe it's that you know yeah. that Puritan spirit. Well, I don't know what you it were is. We're talking about the house at mm -hmm. the uh, History Exchange, who were the first circus entrepreneurs in, yes. in, the, in the United States, in America, and how much they gave back to the community, community. that they were very, very philanthropic with all the money that they've, they've yes. um, uh, you know, collected over the years. Yeah, and, and with no need be, you know, right. and they still wanted this to be their home. You know, regardless, they, they travel the world. They still always came back to Southeast. Mm -hmm. They always came back to Putnam County. So that has to say something. All right. Well, talking about philanthropic people and good community community citizens, you are certainly one of them. Oh, thank you. I want to thank you very much for coming on the show. It was a great discussion. Please come back. Oh, I will. And the next thing that's happening at Southeast is the... Is History Exchange. Yeah. And, the, and then also we have the Mad Hatters the course. The Mad Hatters on... On the... Why are you asking me all these difficult questions? <laughs> on the 8th. Sometime in September. <laughs> September so 8th. We have to go. So thanks very much to the crew that comes out so faithfully. And thank you very much, guest, and for all the people who watch. Thanks.